All right, good evening and welcome to the Texarkana Collegiate Academy orientation for the 21-22 school year. My name is Mickey Curtis. I am the Dean of the Secondary Programs here at UAHT and I work specifically with high school students dealing with the Collegiate Academy on the Hope Campus, the Texarkana Campus, and then also Career Centers on both campuses. Um, I'm so excited to not only see some new faces, um, but to also see older faces that have been here with us the past two years. I hope you've had a great summer. And um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I wanna respect your time and make sure that I get you out on the time that I said I wouldn't, hopefully earlier than that. Um, but I would first like to introduce um, UAHT's interim chancellor, Ms. Laura Clark. She's gonna come and speak to you guys for just a few minutes. Good evening, everyone. We're really excited to have you here on campus. Uh, I know for um, hopefully, I think about two thirds of you, it'll be returning to campus. And then the other one third, um, welcome to our campus. We're excited that, that you are here. Um, I know for seniors, okay, you're high school seniors. So this is your year. Um, you kind of got it going, right? You, you, you've got that junior year behind you. You know what college is all about, at least what college is like here. And so this year, instead of having senioritis, you kind of get to just keep on keeping on your senior year, but you also have the task of trying to figure out where am I going when I finish, all right? So knowing where you're gonna to transfer to, what your program of study is, and kind of knowing an idea of, okay, when I start my junior year, this is what I need to do, or if you're wanting to go into a specific program, what are the things I need to, know before I go. So you do have some work to do. And then juniors, you're, those of you that are 11th graders, you actually are full college students, 100%. So where I know this will be exciting for you. I know you've had a little exposure to college type classes and maybe even a couple of classes, but you're gonna be pretty fully immersed in college classes. You're gonna be kind of on a college schedule. So congratulations on making that transition. 10th grade wasn't too bad because you came back. So 10th graders, they came back. So this might be a little different from than what you're used to, or it may not be any different from what you're used to. I don't know what your previous classes have been like, if you've been on a very tough track or on maybe a less tough track. But anyway, it will be a little different because as you're gonna learn is that we do try to really teach you on the same type of level that you will get in a college, from a college professor. So even though you're taking 10th grade, some of your 10th grade classes with us, we're going to teach them like their college classes, kind of the same format. Not, not much extra credit, if any, mostly lecture and exams and those kinds of things, because that's what it's going to be like. So we're just trying to mold you so you, you got it going whenever you finish 10th grade. Um, so we're, we're, we're happy for you all and, and thankful that, um, that you're here and you all kind of know what you kind of need to do this, this semester. I uh, know you have uh, lots of support, and this is why this program is wonderful. About four years ago, someone said, hey, there's this, the number one high school is in Niceville, Florida, and they have what's called a collegiate academy. And they take 10th graders, and they teach them on their high school campus. And then as 11th and 12th graders, they're full-time college students, and they graduate. Wouldn't that be cool? You want to go see it? We said yes. And we did. And a year later, we have the same thing as the number one high school in the nation has here in Texarkana with your school district. So that's a wonderful thing for you all. And as you think about this wonderful thing, thank your administration. Your administration has been tremendously supportive of this program, supportive of you, of you all being here. Um, I meet oftentimes with your principal, so does uh, Dean Curtis. Um, with your assistant superintendent, Robin, um, as well. And so we do a lot of, of, of visiting and talking about the Collegiate Academy, so they've been very supportive. I do want to take just a few minutes, though, since you have some parents and guardians and maybe some other kin with you. I want to talk to the adults right now. So your student needs, um, they, they're learning what it takes to be successful. Tenth grade is about to learn, but we do need your help. They need your help, all right? They need time. They need time to study. They need time to get 
homework done. Um, and those kinds of things can, can be helped or hindered based on what you plan for them. So I just wanna encourage you, family, please think about your student as you may plan a three-day weekend and they're going to, you're going to pull them out of class on Friday and they're going to be gone the whole time and they have a huge math test on Monday. That's probably not very wise for your students. So just think about that. Think about their time. And as we're entering back into a very bad COVID situation, and if you think it's not, you're living in a bubble because it's really bad. It's probably the worst it was than it was in January, which was the peak. They're saying in Arkansas, we're worse than what it was. We need your students um, healthy. So the number one student body on our campus last year who contracted COVID were our high school students. Not our college students, our non-traditional, I mean our traditional students. And they didn't catch it at college. They caught it out and about birthday parties, sporting events, hanging out with friends and things like that. So parents and guardians, keep your student healthy. All right, be mindful, pay attention. We're in a pandemic, it's, it's one of the worst. And now it's hitting the younger population. 20% of our Kansans right now that have COVID are, are under the age of 12. That is startling, startling. So you all know what they say, vaccination, wear your mask, wash your hands, maintain distance. So as of right now, we will ask you to please wear a mask, but that could change where we will mandate it, okay? If the Arkansas will allow us to. So just be mindful of that. I'm a registered nurse. So if you think I'm not gonna play the safety card, <laughs> I will play the safety card because I don't want anyone to get sick when I could have prevented that in some way, even if I have to make someone wear them. It's just what I do, all right? It's what we do as nurses and as medical people. So you guys stay healthy, do everything you can to be successful, because as you know, last year we got to watch the first group walk across the stage and get their diploma, and that was fabulous. And the UA system president was there and I was identifying, hey, this, yep, there's one of our police academy students. That's from, our, that's from Texas, they're from Texarkana. They're from Hope and we had a great time. And so I look forward to doing that again and again and again with you all. So thanks for being here tonight and I'm gonna turn it over to Dean Curtis. Okay, um, there's one more person I want to introduce. She's going to actually come up later on in the presentation to talk to you guys about daily procedures so you kind of know what to expect because this is a totally new environment. Um, there's different rules, different expectations. So we want to make sure you understand what to expect um, on the first day of school. Um, who I'm wanting to introduce is the director of the Texarkana Collegiate Academy, that is Ms. Huff. She's going to be with you each day, so I'll have her wave to you real quick. She'll be coming up soon um, to give her presentation, but she'll be the one with you every day. I am in and I'm all over um, between Hope and Texarkana, so I'm not on this campus at all times. I am stationed over here at least once a week, and I will try to visit with the students during my time on campus. Um, but besides that, I do uh, come in and out just to see how things are going. Um, but to move on, open house packets. These orientation packets were mailed to you guys. Um, I know there's some questions about some of those forms that were sent home, so I'm going to address those real quick if you need to look at those and turn them in afterwards. Um, the concurrent form was sent home. Um, we'll talk about it a little later as well. The handbook documents. Basically, the signature on that is saying you received the handbook, you know the expectations, you know the rules. The information release form, I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute as well. The upward bound application, um, that is an application if you want to fill it out. It does provide your student, if they qualify, for more um, resources. It is in partnership with TRIO, so it provides more tutoring, um, extra resources to your students. So if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and fill that out. It does ask for a teacher recommendation, administrator recommendation. I know we have not started school yet, so if you want to wait and get that filled out when school starts, that is completely fine. Um, you can turn in those applications the first week, second week of school. 
And then the parental consent form to drive and ride, um, that was also in that packet. Basically, that is you giving your child permission to drive on our campus. Um, if they are in the 11th and 12th grade, they do come and go. They are treated like a traditional college student. Uh, the majority of those students are done by about noon, one o'clock, and they are off of our campus and done for the day. 10th grade students, you do have um, a tighter schedule because there are certain high school classes you have to get completed in that 10th grade year before you can transition into um, all college courses for that 11th and 12th grade year. But if you are not wanting to ride the bus back and forth and you drive in the 10th grade, you, I need that form on file. Or if you're going to ride with an upperclassman, I'm going to need that form on file, okay? Um, so you can't just hop in the car with somebody. We have to have documentation to prove that that um, is okay with parents for you to be able to do it. Today, 10th graders, you picked up your schedules. 11th and 12th graders, you've already had those. I sat down with you guys in the spring semester. That schedule has not changed unless you have reached out to me about your classes. 10th graders, when you look at your schedules, if there is something wrong or you're supposed to be in something else at the high school that you're wanting to be in, please get with me after this um, uh, presentation and I will make note of that and we will get you in those classes. Um, the student login sheet was also handed out to the 10th graders. This shows you how to log into your email, which is very important. This is how I communicate with you. Ms. Huff is going to communicate with you and your instructors are going to communicate with you. Email needs to be checked every day. That is the life of a college student. That's how they are going to communicate with you. It also shows you how to log into your Blackboard and your MyUAHT. Your Blackboard is your online platform, parents, where you check grades, students, that's where you're gonna have lectures, notes, homework assignments, um, Blackboard is used across the University of Arkansas system. So when you get done here, if you were to transfer to another system school, you're already gonna know how to use that platform as well. And so um, the student's guide to online courses is the last thing that was handed out. That's handed out to mainly 11th and 12th graders. There were a few 10th graders who have one online course. Parents, make sure you look through that. The student's guide uh, to online is going to explain the expectations of an online course, how that is handled. It's got the calendar in it and everything. At the end of that packet, there is a signature form that needs to be turned in as well for it. Next, we're going to look at the mission and vision statement. I just wanna make sure everybody understands what our goal is here for the Collegiate Academy. Um, our mission is to provide students with a three-year curriculum that allows them the opportunity to complete a high school diploma and an associate degree simultaneously. Okay, the associate degree that the students are working on is an associate of arts. It is a transfer option. Every class that the students are placed into will transfer to a four-year public university in the state of Arkansas. Okay, so when I work with you on your degree plans, we will set that up and as you progress, so one thing that's very important is in, you are on a fast track, okay? When you graduate high school, you're two years ahead. You will graduate high school and you will be a junior in college when you graduate, okay? So what that means is right now as 10th graders, our new students, you really need to start thinking about what you want to do when you graduate high school because where traditional high school students have two years to think about that with their basic classes, you're not gonna have that, okay? Unless you just wanna randomly take courses and waste money, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna start thinking about that right now. Possible careers you're interested in, possible schools you're interested in transferring to. Um, because your 10th grade year will go by fast and before you know it, you'll be like the seniors that are out here who are going to start applying to colleges in the next month and applying for scholarships. So they already have to have that job in mind on what they wanna do because when you transfer, you declare a major at that point, okay? So you're gonna be working towards that Associate of Arts. This is absolutely free to you guys. Um, the district pays the cost um, depending on what financial aid does not pick up, okay? So you're saving yourselves a ton of money getting these two years out of the way. 
but then it opens up other doors for you and scholarships when you transfer. So start thinking about that um, as you start this program. Juniors, you really need to make sure you have something figured out. And seniors, the majority of you have already told me things that you are wanting to do, and we've got pretty solid plans on that. Um, our vision statement is to see that every student receives a strong educational foundation to continue towards a post-secondary degree by meeting students' educational, personal, social, and career development needs. The principles of participation, I'm not going to read all of these. This was included in your handbook. I just want to make sure that you have looked over some of these, and some of them are real important, so I do want to point those out. Number one, what number one is telling you is that all courses will be taught on college level rigor and expectations. So 10th graders, your 10th grade uh, high school core classes that are taught on our campus, if you are in the English class or if you are in the Algebra 2 class, those will be set up and taught like a college level course. Your classes are set up on days to resemble a college course. You will have a syllabus and then the rigor will also be on a college course. The reason for that is when you are in the 10th grade and you jump to comp one in the 11th grade, you're jumping past that 11th and 12th grade where most people take comp one after they've graduated. So we've got to get you to that point. Um, so be ready for higher level rigor and expectations in all of your classes. Um, number two, all Collegiate Academy students are not only going to follow the um, Texarkana Arkansas School District policies, but you will also follow college policies, okay? So you're held to higher standards and expectations there as well. You're not following just one set of rules, you're following two. So on our college campus, we do expect you guys to act like college students. You're going to be taking classes with traditional college students who are paying for their classes. So we want to make sure that you are also behaving in a manner that is not disruptive to them and their learning environment. So um, discipline is obviously one thing that is not uh, put up with on the campus. And I can say we have not had um, any issues with that. Most kids level up and uh, step up to those high expectations. Number four, um, just want to make sure parents understand that this is an open campus. So that goes back to the fact that there are going to be traditional college students on this campus. Your students will be in classes with traditional college students. Um, they will be in there with uh, students who just graduated high school taking college level courses and then your non-traditional students who might be 30 or 40 coming back and getting a degree. So it is an open campus. Students, you will be taking it with non-high school age students as well. And the first point of contact, parents, if you have any questions, concerns, is going to be Ms. Huff. Um, Ms. Huff does handle the high school side of things. I will handle the college side of things. So if there is any questions you have, first bring them to Ms. Huff. If a meeting needs to be set up with me at that point, I will get with you to answer any questions regarding college expectations. Um, number seven, briefly, 10th grade only will be required to attend the parent-teacher conference that will be scheduled meetings. It's not set up like the normal high school conference. We'll have a date, scheduled meetings will occur, and you will sit down with Ms. Huff and um, any teachers that your child has at that point. Number nine. Um, I want you to understand that completion of high school graduation requirements does not guarantee completion of an associate's degree. So what I'm saying there is an associate's degree to pass the class, you have to have a 70% or higher. High school courses, you can drop down to a 60 and pass. So if you're making D's in your classes, you're not getting the credits for the associate's degree. You might get high school credit, but you're not gonna get the credit for that um, class for your uh, associate's degree. Transferring universities um, do not typically take these, so the standard is a 70% or higher in your classes. Number 10, um, the school district is going to provide all students with a Chromebook and a calculator so that you can access your classes at home if you need to. You'll have them for your classes here on campus. So there is going to be um, 
a form that you'll have to sign for instructional materials, just basically saying you're going to take care of them. And then number 13, I understand that the mission and purpose of the Collegiate Academy is to provide accelerated instruction and college level curriculum to motivated students. If I fail to make adequate progress on the path to graduating from high school on time to meeting the attendance requirements or discipline requirements, I will be reassigned to the traditional campus. So the Collegiate Academy is a privilege. Um, it's not something that anybody can just come and participate in. Um, you applied for it, you were accepted into the program. But to stay in the program, you have to pass your classes. Um, you are not only working on a high school transcript, but you are now going to be working on a college transcript. So you've got two transcripts that are very, very important for you. If you start to destroy either one of those transcripts with non-passing grades at that point, I would need to transition you back to the high school. Um, the college transcript is very, very important. I still have to turn in every college transcript I ever had to any job that I apply to. Um, it's going to affect your transfer to a four-year university. They do expect certain GPAs when it comes to transferring to them, looking at your high school and your college transcript, and it's also going to affect scholarships. So if I see that you're leading down a pathway that's going to hinder you in the future, at that point I would make the decision that it is best to transition you back to the high school. Um, so the high school diploma is your number one goal. We want to make sure that you are on track to that and the associate's degree is obviously a plus there. Now when you start the Collegiate Academy, if you decide this is too much for me, um, you just need to come and talk to me. That decision does need to be made in the first 10 days. Um, that way the transition is easier to the high school and we can get you in classes. Um, if not, it would have to be made at the end of that semester. Another thing that was sent to you was the academic calendar. Um, we did combine dates here, so a bonus to the Collegiate Academy is you will follow the college calendar. Um, the college start date, the college end date, any dates that we are out. So we do start school later. Um, we uh, start classes August 23rd. Um, we do end a lot sooner as well. Usually we end several weeks before the high school is out. And um, so you will follow the college schedule um, when it comes to your classes. Now there are some times where uh, 10th grade you will follow the high school calendar if the high school is out and you are in a high school class which is English or Algebra 2 on our campus, we will cancel those classes, but college classes will never be canceled. If the high school is closed and we are open, you're expected to be in all of your college classes. So make sure you take note of that as well. So the start date, I've already discussed that, would be Monday, August 23rd, 11th and 12th grade, and some 10th graders who have an online class, that will also start Monday, August 23rd. Make sure you look at that document I handed out with the calendar in it. The student login sheet, I passed that out as well. I explained that earlier, which will show you 10th graders how to log in to everything that you will need to be successful for this upcoming school year. The concurrent enrollment form was sent in that orientation packet. And some questions were about the principal's signature and the counselor's signature. Just leave that blank. We handle that piece. The only thing that you need to do is fill out the top, put your social security number, student signature, and parent signature. The information release form. So this is a college policy. This is something you guys will learn now, but as your student transfers, parents, this is something else that you will have to deal with. Um, you want to make sure that first box is checked and parents, you want to make sure your names are on those lines where your student signs. Basically, this is saying your student is giving you permission to call and access their grades and their transcripts. If you are not on that, we cannot talk to you about their grades, okay? So if something happens and Ms. Huff is needing to talk to a parent and you guys call up here and we have to tell you we can't talk to you about that, your child did not put you down as somebody information can be released to, um, that's usually not a very good conversation at home and that form comes up the next day immediately, okay? 
had a few students try that. It does not end well, students. Go ahead and put your parents' names on that and sign it, okay? That is uh, the policy at every university. So when your students transfer, that is something that um, parents, you also wanna make sure that you have signed if you want to be in the know of your students' progress towards their degree. Okay, grades, I discussed this a little bit, but passing grades for college courses are 70% or higher. Each teacher will include their grading policy in their syllabus. The syllabus is very important for all parents to look at and for all students to read thoroughly. Grading policies are a lot different than K through 12. Your tests are gonna be a larger percentage. There's gonna be uh, lecture points that are gonna be a bigger percentage than maybe a homework assignment. And it's gonna be completely different for each instructor. So you wanna make sure you look at that, see how they are grading um, their work. If a student drops below a 2.0 GPA, they're placed on academic probation here at UAHT. And at that point, they would have to transition back to the high school. Parents' grades will be placed on Blackboard. We do have a uh, video on our website that shows you guys how to work Blackboard. 10th graders, we're going to work with you on how to use that. I know that's going to be new to you. One thing that we do are going to do this upcoming year for the Collegiate Academy students is if a student's grade drops below a 70%, they're going to be assigned a mandatory study hall during the day when they don't have class. Okay, if they are assigned a mandatory study hall, what that is telling you is your child is failing a class. And so they are needing assistance, and in my opinion, they're needing us to step in and assist and make sure that they are receiving the tutoring that they need. Um, during that study hall, they're gonna get tutoring from teachers, um, from other students on campus. They will use that time to do homework, study, um, anything that is needed to help them lift that grade up. And a student will stay in the study hall until that 70% is lifted. Students, I will go ahead and let you know, grading uh, grades are put in a lot different than high school. High schools are required to put so many grades in each week. College instructors are not. So you could be sitting at a 65 for several weeks and sitting in a study hall. They don't have to grade things immediately for you to lift your grade up to get out of study hall. So make sure that you take note of that and keep your grades above that 70%. Parent communication. Um, the director of the Collegiate Academy, as I stated, is the first point of contact for any parent communication. She will then uh, line you up with me if that is needed. Student behavior and discipline, also talked about this a little bit. Um, we expect you to behave like college students. Um, students are expected to follow college policy when they are on our campus, but you are also expected to follow Arkansas High's rules when you're on their campus, okay? So one big difference is that dress code, okay? High schools require a pretty strict dress code. Colleges do not. So when you're on our campus, um, just make sure everything's covered. If a teacher has to report you for dress code, that's pretty bad, okay? So make sure that um, you can wear whatever you want, but just make sure everything is covered. Um, now, if you go to the high school, during the same day, you need to make sure you're abiding by their dress code or you will have to face those discipline consequences over there. If you're with us the entire time, then you're not gonna have to deal with that. Attendance is another important piece. Um, college policy will be followed regarding attendance. This is completely different than districts as well. A lot of schools allow um, so many absences and it can be pretty lengthy absences. And then if you have doctor's notes, that's gonna cover even more and then you're all covered. That doesn't work on a college campus, okay? So when you have class time, you need to be in class. Each instructor is going to set their own attendance policies. You might have one instructor that allows only three absences and you might have another that allows six. You just need to make sure that you look at that syllabus and you see what that teacher expects. Um, it is the student's responsibility to get with their instructor before they are absent. Okay, so if you know you're going to be absent, you need to go ahead and email your instructor and let them know and make sure you get your missing assignments. Um, if you wake up one morning, you're sick, 
email your instructor immediately, let them know I'm not going to be in class, I'm going to be out sick, and then they will get with you on any missing assignments. So one thing you'll learn about the Collegiate Academy, a lot of the responsibility is placed on students. Students usually don't learn that until they graduate high school, and that's why a lot of them end up back home at a four-year university, okay? So we're trying to teach you that responsibility right now. So make sure that you know that it is your responsibility if you're absent that you are to get with your instructor. If a student misses too many days, your instructor will drop you from your course. When they drop you from your course, at that point, we will look at a transition back. Um, so you need to make sure that you are in your classes. If you have doctor's appointments, you need to schedule those during times that you do not have classes. Student IDs, all students will get a student ID. 10th grade, you don't have to worry about that right now. We will get those student IDs for you during the first week of school. 11th and 12th grade, um, you can go ahead and start getting your student IDs. I've got the times up there, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 4.30 or Fridays from 8 to 1. Um, 11th and 12th graders, you will need that ID to rent your textbooks. 10th graders will handle textbooks the first week of school. Um, another thing is students have to have their IDs with them every day. Okay, we have a sign in, sign out, check in, check out um, procedure over in the TKP building, which is where your students will be housed the majority of the day. They are required to check in when they arrive on campus with their student ID and they are required to check out every time that they leave. That is for safety reasons. That way we can go back and look and see what time your student arrived on our campus, what time they left, if anything was to happen, we can go back and look at that, okay? So that is not an exception or something that you cannot do, students. You have got to sign in and sign out every time you arrive and every time you leave our campus. Textbooks, 11th and 12th grade students, you can start renting your textbooks during the times below. That is starting Wednesday, August 18th through Friday, August 20th. Once again, you're going to need your IDs. 10th graders, we're going to get these the first week of school. So we're gonna walk you through this process so that when you become an 11th and 12th grader, you will know how to come on the college campus and handle all that yourself. For the textbooks, the books will be charged to the student accounts. Students will get a receipt. It will have an amount on that receipt. Parents don't panic. You don't have to pay for the textbooks. The accounts will be cleared, okay? Um, if a student's financial aid does not pick up or uh, cover the textbooks, the districts, do, um, they will pay that cost, okay? Now, one thing you will have to pick up is if your child does not return their textbooks on time. There are, uh, there's a late fee for each day that they don't turn it in at the end of the semester. The district's not gonna cover something that your student didn't return on time, okay? We make sure we let them know about those dates well in advance. Parking stickers, you will need parking stickers for this upcoming school year if you don't want a parking ticket, okay? So make sure that you get your parking stickers. Um, uh, 11th and 12th graders, you will need your student IDs to get your parking stickers. 10th graders, if you drive, we will get your parking stickers the first week of school when you get your student ID. That parking sticker has to be placed on the back driver's side window on the outside. Um, I know this next point is common sense, but I have had a student try this. You have to have a driver's license to drive. And then you have to have a driver's license to get the parking sticker to drive on the UAHD campus. So um, make sure you have your driver's license before you try to drive on campus. Accuplacer scores. Um, all of you had to have a certain Accuplacer score to be um, admitted into this program. Um, 10th graders, one thing that we are going to work on throughout this year, if you are not at an ACT of 19 or the Accuplacer equivalent, you will be retested throughout your 10th grade year to get you to that point. I can say that we have never had to transition a student back because they were not able to lift their Accuplacer scores to that ACT of 19. So we've been able to help the students achieve um, those uh, scores of an ACT 19 by the end of their 10th grade year. You have to have that uh, to take college level courses. 
Um, in reading and English, you'll have to have that 19, and in math, you will have to have at least a 17 to enroll in college algebra with a co-rec. So once again, you'll be given opportunities throughout the year to lift up those scores if you need to. The FAFSA um, is something that all 11th and 12th graders should have already completed last semester. We set up appointments for the students. 10th graders, we will work on getting appointments for you this fall semester. The FAFSA is something you're just gonna have to go ahead and get used to filling out. Um, that's something you'll have to fill out every year your child is in college. Um, that way we can determine if your child qualifies for financial aid. If they do, that'll help cover the cost. And then if they have money left over, which usually students do because it's pretty cheap to go to school here, you will be mailed, your child will be mailed a refund check, okay? The FAFSA, even if you do not think you're going to qualify, you will have to fill it out for certain scholarships that don't even require an income amount on it. And that includes the Arkansas Academic Challenge Lottery Scholarship. So it's best that you go ahead and start getting used to filling that out each year. Syllabus and letters. Some of you students received a uh, syllabus and letter from your 10th grade English <laughs> instructor. Um, so you need to make sure that you look at that, you read that, um, and that is for the 10th grade English class. 11th and 12th graders or 10th graders, if you're in any college level courses, your syllabus will be given to you on the first day of class, and it'll also be located on, the black, on your blackboard. Make sure you do read through that. A lot of complaints, if we ever get any, um, is usually addressed in the syllabus, okay? And the teachers stick to their syllabus. I know Ms. Laura talked a little bit about COVID, but one thing that we do here at UAHT is if a student has a confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19, or if they wake up and are experiencing symptoms, or if they've been in close contact and don't know what they need to do, your first thing to do is to email covid at uaht.edu. Um, that goes straight to our administration and they will give you future steps on what you need to do. Um, but it is your responsibility to get with your instructor about missing class due to illness, okay? Hopefully nobody gets COVID um, throughout this year, but if you do get it or you do get come in close contact, um, we wanna make sure that we provide you with what we can and resources to help you while you're out. Um, also, you will need to email myself and Ms. Huff about any of those absences. And as Ms. Clark said, we will recommend everyone to wear masks when inside in public areas. That can change depending on what we follow, what the University of Arkansas system um, requires. And so if they require something different before school starts and they let us know, we will make sure to let you guys know as well. And now I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Huff for the last few slides to talk about daily procedures. <clears throat> Thank you. I just wanted to uh, re reiterate some of the things that Dean Curtis has already mentioned to us that are pretty important uh, just to make sure that we're keeping all of you safe while you're here on our campus. You are expected, every student from 10th grade to 12th grade, are expected to please sign in with your ID card. 10th graders, when you receive yours, uh, 11th and 12th graders will receive another one um, as well. The scanner is right outside my office door over in the other building, uh, right down that first hallway. I'll be the second office and you'll see the scanner. It's a very quick scan. When you get here every morning, if you'll just scan in and then scan out in the afternoon when you leave or if you leave, for lunch, 11th and 12th grade students are allowed to do that. Please scan out at that time as well and scan back in when you return to campus. Um, again, it's just um, so that we know that you're safe and we know that, that you're when you're here in our, in our care. Uh, students will be provided a Chromebook. Most of you uh, probably have been issued one from the high school, but I do have a card in my office. If you need one, I'll be glad to issue you one uh, for use for the school year. A calculator, if you need it for your math or your science class, we will have those available as well. And of course, your textbooks will be issued to you. Um, as far as bus transportation is concerned, sometimes it takes us a little while to get that all worked out because your schedules are all different. 
Um, but you will be provided bus transportation if you need it to the campus. If you are a bus rider in the district, you can ride the bus to the high school, the bus that picks you up from home or from your bus stop to the high school. And then we do have a bus that comes to the college. So you'll be switching buses and you'll come to the college for your classes. And then that bus will pick you back up in the afternoons when your classes are over at about 2.30. So if you are a bus rider, you'll definitely have transportation to and from the campus as well. Our daily procedures for 10th grade, I know this first one you're probably not gonna like 10th graders, um, but you are go going to be required to turn over to me your cell phones for the day when you get to campus. I know, look at those heads pop up, like what did she just say? And I know it's like you're, I'm asking you to give me your right arm, but I promise I'll give it back to you at the end of the day. And again, it's until we are mature and focused enough so that we can be more responsible and more accountable as 10th graders. So 11th and 12th graders are not asked to do that, but as 10th graders you are. So I would appreciate it if we would abide by that rule. Parents, if you do need to contact your students at some point during the day and you're used to calling them or texting them on their cell phones, if you'll give me a call, I'll make sure that your student gets a message, okay? So you, there will be uh, communication available between you and your student during that day. As I said, school is over at about 2.30 each day. If you're a bus rider, your bus will be here around that time to pick you up. Don't panic in those first few days if the bus is, you know, five minutes late or 10 minutes late. They've kind of got to get our schedule, get used to our schedule and know when pickup is here at the college. So you're not stranded here, a bus will be coming to pick you up. And sometimes we do have to call transportation, remind them, hey, it's 2.35, we need you here. We've got five kids out there waiting to get back to the high school. So um, that will be taken care of for you. As Dean Curtis mentioned, there will be a mandatory study hall if your grade falls below a 70%. And that's just to make sure that we are providing you the support that you need to complete this program. We don't want anyone to fail, especially if we've not given you what you need to be successful. So if your grade does fall below a 70, mandatory study hall, and that's for all grades, 10th, 11th, and 12th grades. We will have a weekly advisory where every student is uh, required to come in to set a time to come in and let me take a look at their grades. Again, just make sure that you're on the right track, that if, if you're falling, in a subject that we get with your instructor and we find out what the problem is so that we can get you back on the right track. That's always going to be the goal to make you successful in our program. 11th and 12th graders, um, again, as with 10th grade, there will be an advisory period set up for grade checks with me. It's a very quick process. You come in, you pull up your blackboard on your cell phone if you're 11th or 12th grade and um, we can do a quick grade check and you're on your way. So it's not like you have to sit down with me and, and you know, I'm not gonna chew you out about your grades. It's just, you know, if we need to, to talk with your instructor, if we need to get you back on track, then we wanna do that as quickly as possible. And again, that's if your grade does fall below a 70%. Um, as far as lunch or breakfast here on campus, Breakfast will not be provided here on campus. If you do eat breakfast and you don't want to eat it at home, then you go to the high school as you will anyway, unless you're going to be a car rider straight to the campus, if your parents going to drop you off, if you're driving yourself. Um, so you can eat breakfast at the high school campus and then be ready to catch the bus over to begin your, your day here at the college. Lunch will be provided here on campus by our district um, lunch personnel. Um, kind of depends on how many students are interested in that. So they are willing to work with us and they'll be bringing lunch over if we have enough students interested in it. Um, I did notice last year that lunch a lot of times became the snack machine, which isn't the healthiest lunch, but kids would run through, grab a bag of chips on the way to the next class. And you know, that's what kids do, that's what I do sometimes. But um, lunch will definitely be provided. We'll make sure that if you're interested in having your lunch here at the college provided by TASD, we'll make sure that that's, uh, that program is put in order for you. 
If you're 11th or 12th grade and you're driving, you are allowed to leave campus for lunch. Just please make sure that you are back in time if you have a class afterwards, okay? So you can't go to lunch, take a two hour lunch, and you know you have a class coming up at 1.15 and it's 1.45 and you're still, you know, at tamales enjoying tacos. You know, you wanna make sure that you're back in class on time for your next class. Again, signing in and out, we're asking that you do that each day when you arrive, each afternoon when you leave, and if you're leaving sometime during the day, please make sure that you uh, sign out at that time. If you're having to be checked out for a doctor's appointment, dental appointment, whatever the reason may be, please have your parents to call me or text. I'll give you my cell number if you need to text. Um, a note from your parent, an email will work, just so that we know, you know that your student is leaving campus at that time and whether or not they'll be coming back. No student is allowed to leave early without first letting myself know. And again, it's, it's not because, you know, we want to keep our thumbs on you. It's because we want to make sure that you're safe and that we know where you are when you're here on our campus. Uh, bus transportation, again, if you ride the bus, you will be dropped off or you'll be picked up from the high school. You'll be dropped back to the high school at 2.30 when your classes here are over. And then you'll take your regular bus home in the afternoons if you're a bus rider. If you do have a class in the morning, I know that I'm not sure if athletics is still being offered in the morning um, at the high school, but if it is, and you're an athlete and you have to go to athletics first period, um, you go ahead and you do that, and then the bus will be uh, scheduled to bring you over after that class is over. So you won't be missing your extracurricular classes, okay? Um, all, all that will be worked out and I'll make sure that I'll be getting with Mr. Anderson at, in the transportation department to make sure that all that's taken care of. If you end your day at the high school and you don't ride the bus back to the high school, then you will need to be picked up unless you're driving your own vehicle. Okay. Um, the last thing is, as Dean Curtis mentioned earlier, if you received the documents in, the, in your mail or in the mail and you've not returned that and you didn't return it today, please make sure that you get that back by Friday. August 27th, we do need all of those documents back, the handbook forms, everything that was included in there, we do need to have that back by, by Friday, August 27th. Um, the student got to online course forms for 11th and 12th grade, we need those as well. So that is going to conclude the procedures and expectations for the Collegiate Academy. I know that was a lot of information, um, but we just want to make sure everybody knows what is expected of their student and of you as parents and guardians before you uh, start down this path with us for the Collegiate Academy. Um, I can tell you right now we have had, uh, last year was our first graduating class. Every single student we had graduated with their associate's degree and their high school diploma. Um, all of them transferred to a four-year university to complete or to continue their degrees all over the state of Arkansas. Some of them went to Fayetteville um, and uh, utilized that transfer scholarship paying our tuition rate, which saved them um, a lot of money. And then we had some just stay around at um, SAU or Henderson or um, UCA had some go to Arkansas State. So we have them all over the place. So we want to see you guys take that step as well. And so we're here to help you through that process. I'm here to answer any questions. Um, and you know, I even had, I think two or three students who went to the workforce after finishing their associate's degree. And there is nothing wrong with that either. Um, that associate's degree gave them a bump to a higher pay grade in the jobs that they wanted to go into. Um, and so that's um, another bonus and a plus for them as well. So I'm going to show you my contact information. If you need me for anything, if you think of some questions after this, my email is up there, my uh, direct line to my office, and so is Ms. Huff's phone number and her email address. And now I'm going to open up for any questions that you guys might have that I have not addressed. 
Um, as I stated, I know that was a lot of information. These meetings can be long. Um, does anybody have any questions at all that I can answer? Okay, so 10th graders, your schedules. If there is anything wrong with your schedule, please get with me after this and then I will see what I can do. I can tell you right now, athletics was very difficult to work with. Athletics is all throughout the day for you guys. That's a lot different than any of the districts I've, I work with. So, um, but we did make it work. Um, but if you have any questions about your schedule, remember those forms need to be turned in. If you did not get a t-shirt, pick up your t-shirt, make sure you get that. If you are not receiving the remind messages, you need to get with me as well, students. That is one way we remind you of things. That is a text message to uh, your child's phone, um, and that allows them to know of any announcements or anything along those lines, okay? <coughs> so if you're not receiving those, you should have received one today. If you didn't, let me know. Last call for questions. Hey guys, I'm excited to see you on Monday, August 23rd, and y'all have a great rest of your summer.